Hi there, and welcome to the next lesson. Now, this is getting more exciting because we are trying to animate things in studio right now. So let's start with basic shape animations, and then we're going to proceed to our layout. First and foremost, remember that transitions in studio are happening between the artboards. So we can't really animate anything inside the artboard one, rather than you'll create a transition between artboard one and, for example, artboard two. To trigger the animation, you can select any group or layer or even the entire artboard. And now let's click on this little Add Interaction icon or simply press C on the keyboard. Now you can select any uh, artboard and let's select artboard 2. So we'll have the transition from artboard 1 to artboard 2. And this is the screen that we are navigating to. And the trigger for this interaction is by default tapping on the entire artboard, but we can change it and we have different uh, touch events such as swiping or double tap, or we can select um, trigger uh, for desktop, for example, clicking or mouse over or mouse out. And even we can have a key down on the keyboard or timer to trigger the animation. So after, for example, two seconds, it will automatically go from artboard one to artboard two. So let's stick to this tab by default. And here we have preset and motion. So in motion, you'll have much more detailed control over the animation, and we'll talk about it in a second. Now let's just stick to this uh, default transition preset. And the type of this preset is by default instant. So it will just transition 0, 1 from artboard 1 to 2. But instead of this, we can select, for example, fade in or sliding to left or right or pushing to left, right, up and down. Just remember that this is sliding to left. It means that the first artboard will basically slide to the left hand side and the second artboard will appear from the right hand side instead of this second artboard flying from the left. Okay, So um, we can, uh, for example, select fading in and just click save. And now this interaction has been added. We can test the interaction by pressing uh, this little play icon. And let's check out this interaction. I'm just going to click on this, and we have a simple transition to the next artboard. Now let's refine this transition, and let's uh, select, instead of fading, for example, pushing to the right-hand side. So if I push to the right, let's click on uh, this little icon, you see that this artboard is actually being pushed to the right, and the second one is arriving from the left-hand side. So this is as easy as that. Now, let's create even more sophisticated transition between the artboards 3 and 4. I've selected the third artboard, and I can go to Interactions and click this little plus icon. So this is an alternative way of adding the interaction. Now I have to target the screen. This is artboard 4. And instead of this preset, I'm going to select motion. So if you select motion, you can change the duration of the entire animation as well as set some delay at the beginning. But the most important is that you can edit the timeline. And if you click on this Edit Timeline button, you'll see that uh, the interface of Studio changed. And we actually have a timeline over here to the left-hand side. We can make it slightly bigger or smaller. Or we can position it at the bottom like this so that we can see more time of the animation. So there is a time of the animation uh, on this scale. We can click and make it bigger or smaller, but this is just a preview of the timeline, not the actual you know, time of the animation. It still stays 0.3 seconds. Now let's position it like right here. Now let's explore some playback options. You can click and drag this playhead to preview the animation. You can also go to the first frame, which happens to be Artboard 3. And you can go to the last frame, which is Artboard 4. You can press play or spacebar to preview the animation or either uh, play it in a loop like this. You can click here and select, for example, 10% to slow me down. No, just kidding. You are slowing down the animation speed. Below, you'll find the list of groups and layers that are both on Artboard 3 and 4. And the way it's shown is that the rectangle is only on Artboard 4. So that's why you have this little black dot here. And it's not present on Artboard 3, and that's why it's empty. If you go to the Artboard 4, or you just position the playhead over the black dot, you can now select this shape and you can edit it as you would do on the artboard. Actually, you can change the size and you can, for example, move it like so. So it will change the animation. But basically, this is just changing the properties as you would do on uh, the artboard 4. So as you see now, this, is, this has been moved. Okay. Now let's explore even more um, advanced animations with artboard 5, 6, and 7. Now what we have here are rectangles. and 
all the names of the layers are the same. This is pretty crucial for now because what I'm going to do is let's change the name of this rectangle on Artboard 5 to Rectangle 1 so that we have different names for this transition. Now I'm going to select the Artboard 5 and transition to Artboard 6 and uh, let's select the motion and edit the timeline. So now you have uh, different layers as we had in the previous example. But what you can basically do is you can select those layers, for example, with command click or shift click here on the layer list and select this little link layers button. If you link the layers, you'll see that you can now edit the first and the last point and there's only one layer present. Basically, this will make the layers transition into one another. And let me play back that. And uh, this is the transition. The animation is now based on the properties of those shapes. So if I go to the Artboard 6 and now select this rectangle and make it bigger, now let's press Command and, for example, rotate it like so. You'll see that I have the animation with both rotation and also changing the color. I can animate different properties and we'll do that later. Now. Let's go back to the example and now let's transition from Artboard 6 to Artboard 7. The difference is that both on the Artboard 6 and Artboard 7 we have layers that are named exactly the same. So we have rectangle here and rectangle there. So let's now create the transition and the motion edit timeline. Now you'll see that we have only one layer and that's because those layers were matched by the name and automatically linked by Studio. You can click on those layers and select unlink layers like so. And you see that we have two rectangles. And you can either click on this link auto link layers. Now Studio will try to find the layers that match the names uh, between the artboards and simply link them all together. Or you can do like we did uh, previously, so selecting those layers and linking them manually. Now if you take a look at the transition, it's happening between artboard 6 and 7 automatically. So this is really cool. Now let's go back and I'm going to show you how to modify those transitions so that they happen automatically. But first, let's select Artboard 7 and create one more transition. Let's press C and go back to the Artboard 5. After a tab, I'm going to use Motion and let's edit the timeline. Now what I'm going to do is select both those layers and link the layers together. Now let's go back and let's select Artboard 5. Now for this interaction, we're going to change the trigger so that we have timer here. The duration of the timer is zero seconds. It means that it will still wait for this 0.3 seconds of the timeline to play and then it will apply the transition after no delay. So we can maybe let's change the timing of this animation to one second, but still we don't want any delay afterwards. Let's select Artboard 6 and change it uh, accordingly. So let's select timer no delay and let's also make this one second animation and from artboard 7 we have already created one second animation but we need to change the trigger so that we have timer and this is it so this should work automatically let's uh, use the preview and as you can see we have nice animations and they are looped because we have an artboard 7 going back to artboard 5 and this is how you create those fancy animations in studio now I'm going to show you one more trick. Well, if we have, maybe let's focus on this artboard 3 and 4 animation. So if we have different elements here, and let's maybe move it to the center once more, what you can do is basically have those shapes appear both on artboard 3 and artboard 4. Let's copy and paste the triangle to artboard 4. Let's make it appear uh, here to the right hand side. And also I can change more properties such as opacity and maybe let's select it once more and change its size slightly like so. Now let's select the re rectangle, let's copy and paste it on the artboard 3 and move it to the left hand side. Now also let's change the size and move uh, the opacity slider to zero. So now I have both triangle and rectangle on both artboards and if I select this uh, interaction and edit the timeline, I can now select those layers and link them all together. And the other way is to click anywhere and use this auto link layers option and it will automatically link the layers that are um, have the same names. And now we should have a nice transition like this. OK, so we've initiated the position of the triangle on both artboards and also the position of the rectangle with different properties. 
We'll use this trick very often and apply it to our layout, but in the next lesson, let's first discover what kind of properties we can animate.